All right, guys, you're looking at a top-of-the-line padlock made by one of the most famous lock companies uh, in history. This is made by Chubb. Of course, they're in the U.K., but unfortunately, I had to buy this from a dealer on eBay uh, out of France, believe it or not. But anyway, we got it. This is the original uh, battleship lock. Um, this was when it was made by Chubb. Solid steel bodies, really very, very heavy lock. The new ones have a gray crinkled finish, and they actually have the word battleship right across the front. But the internals, everything are all the same about this lock. He did give me one key, and this is an original key from Chubb. So very cool to get one of those. And it's very smooth to operate. So I'm learning very quickly that, oh, well, just like pin tumbler locks, some of them like heavy tension, some of them like light tension. I've been leaning towards heavy tension, towards all lever locks, but this one doesn't like heavy tension. He likes really light tension. It doesn't take a lot to turn that key. Give it a complete rotation, and then it pops open. When you look down inside of there, I think you can see a little locking bar. It's not in place. I'm trying, I need one more hand. And when I rotate the key back, I think you can just see them pop down in place there. Solid steel, not spring-loaded, so we will not be shimming this lock. One way to get in this. Interesting thing about these, though, these chubs, like I said, they've been around a long time. They made bank locks and all, so they got a lot of experience. The levers in here, and there are five of them, uh, have false gates in them, so I may or may not get it picked on the first or even the second try. The next thing is that this has a pick indicator. In other words, if you open this lock without using the key, there'll be a little bar that pops down there. So that when, and even if you lock it back, that bar remains there. So when you, the owner of the lock comes back with his key and he tries to insert it, it'll only go in about, like about that far. And he won't be able to put it any further because that bar will block it. You know, it's basically sending him the message that, hey, someone's been messing with your lock and they probably got it open. Anyway, it's easy to reset if you know what you're doing. Beautifully, beautiful lock. Let me go ahead and clamp this up. See if we can't figure out how to tension it, and maybe we can get a pick today. And I'll show you that little locking indicator bar, or pick indicating bar. Okay, hopefully we won't have to torque that thing too much. Uh, this has been quite a journey, figuring this thing out. Uh, on my own, flying blind, basically. All right, um, I'll give you a couple of tips as I go along with some of the lessons I picked up. All right, works perfectly. Rotate it. There we go. We're open, and then lock it back up, and there we go. All right, this is in the way, so I'm going to go ahead and just hold them up there and yeah, it's a piece of tape, kind of hold them out of our way a little bit. All right, some of the lessons. Well, let's talk about tensioning. Slide it all the way in, all the way to the rear, and you'll feel it kind of slide into a little groove back there. And you want to make sure that this thing is far. Don't have it cockeyed like I did several times. It will give you tension, but that's on one of the levers. So make sure it's all the way in the rear and rotates along its axis perfectly, just like that. All right, take your tensioner, slide them in there. And then once you get them all the way against the back wall, then rotate the whole thing. And now this little flat spot gives you room to manipulate your wire. All right, now when you tension him, use light tension on these guys. They really don't like that heavy tension because there are, are false gates on literally every single one of the levers. So, light tension and just kind of feel along. Now, I'm going to pull the wire out up against the face of the lock so I know I'm perfectly aligned with that first lever. Apply my tension and start from there. So lever three, starting to bind. Got a little click. There's four, a little click. Okay, I got a fault set, and usually on these locks, fault sets are really bad news. That means you found a false gate. You either have tension or you have an open. You generally don't have a fault set. And the way you know that, when you start feeling around with your wire, everything is locked up as if it's set, but you don't have an open. The other thing is on this lock, and let me go ahead and move all this stuff, we have the picking indicator. Let me get that wire untangled. Come out of there, you. And I got to zigzag him out. He's much harder to get out than he was to get in. And that's because the, the picking indicator has a little bar. I think I can angle this, put the focus right there. And let me find a probe. There's a little bar that is spring-loaded and just appears right across the middle of the keyway. 
it is spring-loaded, and you, when you trigger him by not using a key, by using a pick, what happens is he prevents the key from being fully inserted. So at night, I'm trying to pick it. I can't. I get a false set. I trigger that bar. The owner shows up the next morning. He sticks his key in to open up his shop, and lo and behold, it doesn't go all the way in, telling him somebody tried to pick his lock last night. Well, as pickers, we got to have a way to reset that. And Chubb was thinking about it. And again, I get the flashlight. See if I can get that reflection just right. Take a probe or a pick and just slide it under. As I said, it is spring-loaded. And just bounce him up and down. And he will unlock and get back out of your way. If you know he's there, it's not a big deal. But if you don't know he's there and you trigger him, you can pick all night. You will never, ever get an open. All right, let's try it again. That was the long way. There's, of course, a much shorter way. And I'll show you that probably 10 or 12 times before this is done. Rotate him around. I'm going to pull the wire all the way against the face, apply light tension, and try to find that binder again. Okay, if you don't find anything, re re uh, let release the tension. You really haven't triggered the uh, picking indicator yet. So just in case you bump something. And there we go. It's pin three or lever three again. I think I fell off him there, but I think we got him. All right. Okay, that was two. And again, it looks like I got a false gate. And indeed, everything is locked and the bar appears. All right, we don't have to pull everything out though. I'm gonna show you the short way. Just take your probe or your pick, slide it in there, bounce it a little bit and he'll reset himself. So let's try it again. And there we go. Get everything out of there. Get my wire out. Get my pick out. And should have an open. There we go. All right, now I have picked it. So obviously the key will no longer go in there. Again, not a problem. Just recock it. Once he's out of the way, your key will then fully insert. You can lock it back up. Not a big deal. But I, don't, I had no idea that was there. It took me a while to figure out that 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 little lever kept popping out. And the only reason I finally figured it out is I, I had a heck of a time getting my tensioner out of there. Then I looked closely and saw the the um, picking indicator bar and was able to figure out it's spring-loaded and poke him out of the way. Anyway, guys, there you go. The Chubb Battleship Tough Lock. I got to say, this one, I don't have a collection, but I may start one, and this will be about lock number two. It's a very cool lock. They're about a hundred bucks on eBay. Anyway, I appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.